Hello everyone, I'm Rahul Gosain, here with my brother Rohit Gosain. And today we're going to focus on how fast the field of bladder cancer is moving. Just before this discussion, we've seen press release from Potomac where our patients are now going to be living longer, even in early settings of bladder cancer. Last year, we saw data from EV302 with overall survival doubling. And early on, we saw approval of Dervalumab in muscle invasive bladder cancer that can be resected. Our focus is going to be on that population, that subset, because now Dervalumab is the new standard of care. For this, we're joined by our two medical oncology colleagues, Dr. Kareem Tuaji and Dr. Petros Grievous, and two urologists, Dr. Joshua Meeks and Dr. Neil Shore. Kareem, can you start us off here? In muscle invasive bladder cancer, where you can resect the bladder, our treatment paradigm has been chemotherapy, surgery, and then adjuvant immunotherapy. With event-free survival and overall survival, now we have Dervalumab. Here we are, what's the current paradigm in this patient population? Absolutely. So I think when we're thinking about muscle invasive bladder cancer, I also just want to mention that we can also think about chemo radiation for select patients. But then when we're talking about patients that are fit for surgery, the main question is, are they cisplatin eligible or not? So we know that we do not have any perioperative chemotherapy for cisplatin ineligible patients, but we have had two regimens that have been approved for cisplatin eligible patients. So we've had gemcitabine cisplatin and then docens MVEC. And then in the last few years, we've had approvals for adjuvant immunotherapy for patients that either do not receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy or have residual disease at the time of cystectomy. And those approvals are based on the Checkmate 274. We have one year of adjuvant nivolumab, um, which met its disease-free survival endpoint, and then had an interim analysis earlier this year favoring overall survival data. And then we've also had the ambassador trial looking at one year of adjuvant pembrolizumab, which has met its disease-free survival but not overall survival endpoint so far. We've also had a negative study looking at adjuvant atezolizumab, but where we are today as far as the standard of care for cisplatin eligible is with the Niagara trial, which is adding dervalumab to that gemcitabine cisplatin in the new adjuvant setting, but then also giving eight cycles of adjuvant dervalumab after cystectomy.